Well, in a minute, we're going to talk about some of the records you have made and your newest one. Now, tell me about your, your granddaughter, Haley. Just well, I was, her story. Our, my family was uh, blessed beyond measure with a, uh, my, my first granddaughter, my firstborn's firstborn, my daughter's daughter. Uh, Haley, Haley Bell and um, Haley Marie, and she was born in 2000. And uh, it, the first couple of years of her life, we thought she was fine. We didn't really, we noticed the little things here and there, like, oh, she may be a little autistic, or she may be a little slow learning, have a learning disability. We had no idea what was coming. Uh, she basically um, had a, a, a neurological dysfunctional condition that was progressive, regressive, that no one could diagnose, and we took her all over the country. I mean, you talk about um, realizing your your inability to to take care of your family. Because I mean, I was as the patriarch of the family. I I love that baby so much. I mean, it's like she, she was just as much mine as my own. Even though it was a grandchild, there's no difference. You know, if you really, there's no difference between a child and a grandchild. Uh, I would just worship the ground that she walked on, and then eventually she didn't walk, and she didn't. She could, then she couldn't crawl, then she couldn't hold her hands up, she couldn't, she would fall over her head, she couldn't control her head, lost ability to speak. How old was she then? Uh, this all started going wrong about four, and it went, it was a very fast downward spiral. And over the next uh, six years, it was just brutal. It just got worse and worse and worse. Um, medically, we tried everywhere, everything, every, you know, uh, Mayo, Johns Hopkins, uh, Children's Hospitals in Phoenix, Salt Lake City. Dallas, of course, um, no, nothing. And it soon became apparent as this journey went on that doctors were saying, well, we're gonna get you some answers, although they couldn't, but if they did get a diagnosis, we, it became apparent that we weren't gonna like it. In other words, we're looking, we're at, now we're out here trying to get a diagnosis, but no one is saying we can help this child. She's not gonna get any better. And so it, it, so it, it was, it was hor horrifying to watch how much she suffered and how, I mean, she couldn't swallow, she couldn't, um, but yet, but yet totally aware, which is another issue of why, one other reason, which I'm sure we'll get into later, but maybe about why I'm so involved in all these, these, uh, these life issues, but. She's a little girl going through all this stuff. Yeah, tiny little girl that had no clue what was happening to her. And, and she, when you'd look at her, she would look at you with fear, like, Poppy, what, you know, do something. I don't know, why can't I do this? Why can't I, I'm itching and I can't move my hand to scratch it. But that, but that didn't mean like she was just, just, you know, no, she was totally alert and aware, but could do nothing. Her motor, her cerebellum was just basically being eaten away. Colin, a couple of years ago, you put out an album, Never Going Back, and you had a song, She's With Me. She's with me I proudly tell the mater d as we arrive He seems surprised In a clumsy moment as he looks for room For her blessed chair A table stairs And their eyes show only pity as they try to sympathize Oh, how difficult that must be Look away Day after day They'll never see The joy in me I'm only happy at the times I know that she's with me well, I wrote that song on an airplane while she was alive, about a year before she passed away, um, as a tribute to her, just, uh, just trying to describe the overwhelming um, joy slash sorrow that comes with, with having a child like that that you love so much, that you cannot do anything for. Um, and it was a celebration of her life you know, and it, it ended with a true thought that I, I thought about the idea of the song was, you know, because I, I, everywhere we would go, I mean, I tried to keep it with me all that I could, you know, and, and if we went into a restaurant, you know, or whatever, you know, you'd wheel in with a chair or whatever, and invariably people turn around and they look, you know, and, 
and, and, and sometimes they'll smile, a lot of times they just look down, and because, you know, they're thinking, oh, bless their heart, and doesn't that just look, I'm glad that's not me, you know. Um, and you, you, go, you see that all the time, but the whole time my chest is just beating with pride. I'm so proud of that kid. Uh, there's a verse in there about going to the mall with her, you know, and just, it's, I don't know, I, I just wanted to describe how we felt, and, and I always would feel like, well, where, where can you put the chair? You felt like going in and saying, well, don't worry, she's with me, you know. She, you know, she, she comes in because I'm coming in, you know, that type of thing. And, and then I would think that in, it, when I meet my maker, whether it's St. Peter I meet first or the Lord himself, the Blessed Mother, whoever it is it's gonna, that I'm going to face, face down, I know they're going to look at me and go, <laughs> because I am a flawed human being. I have a lot to, 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 uh, uh, to answer for in my life. And, and I thought, had the thought occurred to me, well, what if I had her stand in there with me? And she said, don't worry, he, let him come in because he's with me. Because uh, I knew she was perfect. And that's I, in your song. Yeah. And that's how it ends. And she's a perfect human being. I mean, she has no ability to sin. She never knew what sin was and couldn't have sinned if she wanted to. She had no, you know. So There's I no knew, doubt she's in heaven. Yeah. And I knew we had a saint living with us. And, uh, and then when, it, when she passed away, and it, it was still unexpected. I thought we were going to keep her till she was 14 or 15. And she was 10. And the Lord just decided to stop her heart one day and stop her breathing. And that was it. And... Uh, you know, we, my daughter called 911, and I can't imagine my daughter going through that. Uh, I was gone. I was coming back from Kansas City from a show, and I just got the call from the nurse saying, call immediately something, you know, and I don't know, oh, God. Um, got there as fast as I could, and they had resuscitated her, but basically she lived another six days in, in a semi, semi-awake, not, never really looked at us, but the eyes would flicker, semi-coma uh, state, comatose state. And I think one of the biggest regrets I have about that, we're not supposed to carry regrets with us for things we couldn't control, but I will always carry regret that I wasn't there with Brittany when she had to go through that. She was there alone with, we have another little, I have, I have another little granddaughter, Brittany's second daughter, Maddie, who now is seven, and so she would have been five at this time. And uh, it was just Brittany and the, and the girls there when Haley just died. And so she was doing everything she could to resuscitate her. They did get her, like I said, they did get her awake after about, or her heart, they got vitals back, uh, a pulse after about 15, 16 minutes of, of being shut down. And so that's, you know, that's bad news when you go without oxygen to the brain that long, especially the little brain she had. Uh, but I just wish so much I'd been there too, but God didn't want me there. He chose for me to be somewhere else.